Hey guys, welcome back to part two of things I wish I knew before breastfeeding. If you're new here, my name is Vakisha, aka A Relatable Mama. I have five beautiful baby girls. I breastfed all five of them for different lengths of time. I decided to make this video because I was very undereducated in the beginning uh, with my first few babies. And I feel like had I had videos like this or just just was more educated, then I would have had a more successful journey. I say it like that because I do feel like any amount of breastfeeding is a success story for me um, in my eyes. But we all know we go into breastfeeding, we have certain goals, we all feel the way we feel about breastfeeding, we feel like it's the best for our babies and things like that. So when it doesn't work out or it doesn't look the way that we thought it would look, we we tend to deem our journeys unsuccessful and um so i don't want to use the word unsuccessful but i feel like they would have been more successful meaning i would have been able to go longer had i had the knowledge so in part one i went over the things the top five things that i wish i would have known while pregnant and when i had the baby so now i'm going to go over the things that i wish i would have known known going home with baby so number six on my list is going to be lactation specialist. A lactation specialist is usually an RN who is certified in lactation. They have studied the anatomy of the breast. They have um, studied the breastfeeding, latching, what it should look like, what it should feel like. They can give you knowledge about your supply, the ups, the downs, and they're just someone for you to call on throughout your entire breastfeeding journey should you need them. You usually see a lactation specialist in the hospital right after you have the baby. Um, but what people, a lot of people, a lot of women don't know is that your insurance usually covers for you to see the lactation specialist after you've left the hospital. Most hospitals will also um, let you know that you can continue to call on the lactation specialist should you need her. Um, if your insurance does not cover a lactation specialist, there is a program called WIC. Most Cities, counties have this nutritional program. It's for women and children, and they give resources for breastfeeding. Um, they also will have a lactation specialist there in the office. I don't know what that looks like now um, through COVID, but I do know that you're always able to call. Um, I know that you can do virtual lactation visits. It's not the same thing, in my opinion, as um, in person, where they can look and feel and really see I'm looking down like the baby's right here but where they could really see you latch your baby and see what baby is doing if you're having any issues but just if you're getting ready to go into your breastfeeding journey or just start it and you don't know what a lactation specialist is just do me a favor research and see what the resources are in your area should you happen to need a lactation specialist because she or I won't say he, I don't think I've ever met any male specialists. I'm sure there are some out there, but your lactation specialist is a game changer and can really help you continue. It, it, she could be the difference between your journey continuing and ending if you're having that much trouble. Number seven on my list, I wish that I would have known about cluster feeding. Oh my goodness. I was never taught about cluster feeding when I had my first few babies. I, actually, I did not learn about cluster feeding until my third baby. Um, this was Callie and she was hungry every 30 minutes, just crying, 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 just wanting to be at the breast. And so what I thought was, my, ba my you can't see what's coming out of your breast. So for me, nothing must be coming out, right? She's still hungry. She's still crying. I mean, she's she was between two and four weeks old and i just i panicked i called my mom I'm, I'm crying i'm just oh my god i'm starving my baby mom i'm starving my baby i call the pediatrician i go in and that's when my pediatrician taught me about cluster feeding now with callie i didn't continue my breastfeeding journey because she actually did start to lose weight at some point um and so they had me switch her over to formula. And again, had I had a lactation specialist by my side, my lactation specialist would have told me, okay, just because you go to formula doesn't mean you stop breastfeeding. You can still pump, you can still latch to keep your supply there. And once we get our weight back up, then we switch back over to exclusively breastfeeding. Or 
like I said in part one, human donor milk. The baby was underway. I could have gotten human donor milk. She would have never gotten the formula. Nothing wrong with formula. It's just not what I had planned for my babe. And, um, you know, I just would have had the guidance. Like I said, all of these things go together. Um, so, yeah, cluster feeding. Cluster feeding is what your baby does every few months when they go through a developmental leap. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong with your baby. You are going to be very tired. Your nipples will probably be very sore the first time that you go through cluster feeding because, like I said, for me with Callie, it was a week of feeding every 30 minutes. But rest assured, you're not doing anything wrong. This is normal. This is actually a great sign that your baby is thriving and making those developmental leaps as he or she should. Number eight on my list, the Hakka. Guys, I don't even know when the Hakka was made, but I wish I would have known about the Hakka as soon as it was made because game changer, I wasted legit i'll put some pictures up here so y'all don't think i'm over like being dramatic legit i'm sure i've wasted hundreds of ounces of milk without the haka so whenever you latch your baby onto one side it stimulates the nipple on the other side and you start to leak usually you have your disposable uh, nursing pad or your reusable nursing pad that will just soak all of that up y'all so the haka you put on the breast that you're not um nursing from one baby is latched to the other side and it catches the letdown that's what you call letdown and when i tell you i could connect the haka and have three to four ounces of milk by the time my baby would finish on finish on one side so all that milk before the haka all that milk was just getting sucked into a reusable pad and i used to take off my reusable pads i used reusable before i i mean no I did not use reusable. I used the disposable nursing pads before I knew about the reusable. Not that it makes any difference as far as uh, the milk that's wasted. But when I tell you that disposable nursing pad used to be so heavy and so full, guys, <sighs> I digress. Super sad about that. But yes, the Haka. If you don't know what it is, take a look. In Amazon it is a game changer I will also link maybe some YouTube videos that shows you what the Hakka is and how to use it down below in the description thank me later number nine on my list breast feeding support groups y'all I am a firm believer in support groups period had I known that there was an option for a breastfeeding support group even if there wasn't an option if it just wasn't something that was in my mind i would have created one do you hear me i would have created one that's how important support groups are for me especially with breastfeeding you when you have your baby you already go through this period where you feel kind of alone kind of different um and just you you are just not yourself so having a support group there is amazing i have a mama's group and i don't know where i would be without them today like legit legit um so there are breastfeeding support groups and to be able to reach out and send a quick little message to a group chat and say hey this is what i'm experiencing this is what's going on have y'all experienced this what should i do game changer again just like a lactation specialist having that support is just it just changes everything and it helps you mentally to be able to gather yourself to just put things into perspective and to make educated decisions on what you're doing. It, it's such a new journey and every journey is different. No journey is like the next so or like the last. So yeah, just very important. I wish I had known about breastfeeding support groups. If you do the research in your area and you don't find any support groups, like I said, back to that nutrition, um, that nutrition program, WIC, you can always call them and they will have resources to lines that you can call in on when you need support. So even though you may not have a physical group there, um, there's always a line for you to call. I want to say, um, I've, and I've never used it, so this is why I'm kind of... I don't really know. Again, I'll, I'll link as much information as I can below, but I think it's La Leche um, is a very popular support group 
that you can call into any time of the day whenever you need support for breastfeeding. Finally, number 10 on my list. I wish I would have known to just relax, okay? <sighs> breastfeeding is a journey. It is a journey of ups, downs. Um, it's a lot. And the first thing that you have to tell yourself going into breastfeeding is relax. The journey that you will go on is the journey that is for you. It may not look like what you thought it would look like. It may not end the way that you want it to end. It may, it may not start the way that you want it to start. You might even end up not breastfeeding. It's totally fine if you have to go a different route with feeding. Um, don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself grace. You know, if you educate yourself and you do the very best that you can, what else, what, what else can you do, sweetie? What else can you do? It is what it is. As long as your baby is healthy and growing and thriving, that's all that, that's all that matters. Okay. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. But the first thing you have to do going into breastfeeding is relax. Because if you don't relax, then your body doesn't relax. If you don't relax and your body doesn't relax, your baby doesn't relax. And it only makes your journey that much harder. That is it for part two of things I wish I knew before breastfeeding. I hope that somebody out there found this very resourceful. Um, if you know someone who is getting ready to go on their breastfeeding journey or um, is like right in the beginning or just in a breastfeeding journey period and they may be struggling a little bit, please share this video. It could help someone. And like I said, just if I had found videos like this or known about videos like this when I first started my journey, it would have been a game changer. And that's all I'm trying to do out here is help wherever I can. So if you're new here, thank you for taking the time to watch. I appreciate you. I hope that you will subscribe and join my tribe, join my journey. Make sure you comment below, introduce yourself, add your comments, what you wish you would have known, what I may have gone over that you didn't know that you find to be very helpful. If you're already a subscriber here, hey girl, hey, hey boy, hey, y'all know I appreciate you and your support all the time. Before I get out of here, happy Thanksgiving. I wasn't going to drop this video today because I'm like, everybody is like out and enjoying their families. But when I thought about it, breastfeeding is something I'm really thankful for today. I'm going on 12 months with my last baby Coco. So Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys are enjoying the day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.